Welcome to Clinic Reviews YouTube channel. I'm Dr. Sharon, and I am going to be talking today about basics about EKG. And this is NCLEX stuff that you need to know. And if you have already had some EKG training, this is stuff you already know. But if you haven't, then I do recommend um, watching this video. And I'm going to be talking in other videos about other types of rhythms. But today, we're just going to be talking <clears throat> about the basics, OK? So I have my screen a little different than I usually do because I actually want to be able to have a PowerPoint up while I'm talking. And I don't usually do that. So, all right, so let me first talk about um, the, where the electrical impulse starts. So the interesting thing about the EKG, when you're looking at an EKG or at a telemetry strip, a telemetry strip is just a single strip. An EKG or 12 lead EKG is where you look at all the, you know, you hook them up to all the different um, electrodes and you get that single page strip that prints out and you get all these different leads and stuff, right? So if you're looking at that or you're looking at a telemetry, which is just the single strip that people are hooked up to kind of continuously, what you're really looking at, okay, this, this is important for you to understand, what you're looking at is you're looking at the movement of electrolytes across the cell membrane. And we call that an electrical impulse. And we call it an electrical impulse because these electrolytes have positive and negative charges. And that's a little bit hard to grasp. Like, where does this electrical charge come from? We don't know. Okay, we don't know. Uh, but we do know that if you put a, a, a wire <clears throat> near one of these electrolytes, you can get an upward deflection uh, on a piece of paper because there's an actual electrical charge that comes from these electrolytes. And so we call it an, an electrocardiogram because these are electrolytes that are moving across the cell membrane in the heart. And this electrical impulse this electrical impulse has to start somewhere. And in the normal, healthy heart, this electrical impulse starts in the sinus node. Okay, it starts in the sinus node. And the sinus node is a bundle of cells at the top of the heart. It's the SA node, sinoatrial node, sinus node, whatever you want to call it. It's, the, it's that bundle of cells at the top of the heart. And these cells have the ability to fire spontaneously. And they're considered the pacemaker of the heart. They set the pace of the heart. So I want you to imagine, uh, say you're watching, I don't know how much um, racing we have outside the US. But in the US, uh, there's people who like to watch what's called NASCAR. NASCAR is people racing their cars around it a track, a circle going around and around, see who can, who can win. And we have a famous race, NASCAR race, called the Indianapolis 500. It's, ra uh, it's raced in, the race is held in Indianapolis, Indiana. And every year, <clears throat> that's a famous race, people, so whoever wins it wins a ton of money. Well, there's a ton of cars, like, like so many cars that start this race. And you can't, when you have like 50 cars starting the race, you can't line them up at the starting line, right? Like a track meet, you can't start them up, up on, the, on the starting line because there's too many cars. So what happens is they kind, of, uh, they kind of bundle up together at the beginning of the start and they kind of, you know, there's cars like for a, a significant distance from the beginning to the end, right? So they have what they call a pace car. And the pace car starts and the cars take off after the pace car, and nobody can go faster than the pace car. The pace car is setting the pace. And in fact, if you go around the pace car, you're kicked out of the race. You're not allowed to do that. You have to go the same rate as the pace car. And so there, the pace car sets the pace until some point on the track. I don't know what it is, but at some point on the track, the pace car leaves the track, and then the cars can then go as fast as they want to. They can now go at their own pace. So that's what a pacemaker is. A pacemaker sets the pace. And the SA node sets the pace for the heart. None of the other cells are allowed to fire any faster than the SA node. So the SA node sets the pace. And the pace that the SA node sets 
is a rate of 60 to 100. And that's why our heart rate typically is between 60 and 100 because the sinus node fires at that rate. Okay, and when, and when it fires, the, the sinus node fires, you get this P wave right here. That's when the sinus node fires and the electrical impulse travels through the atria. That's that firing of the SA node. And then when it gets down here to the QRS, that electrical impulse is moving through the ventricles and out into the Purkinje fibers. And you may say, well, how, how does it travel? What does that mean, traveling? What it means, and I'm going to talk a little bit about depolarization and repolarization in just a minute, but what it means is that one cell, so the SA node is a bundle of cells, and when they fire sodium and potassium, which are electrolytes, sodium and potassium switch places. One, go, one leaves the cell and one goes inside the cell. And when those leave and go inside the cell, it causes the cell right next to it to depolarize. And that depolarization, so we have depolarization, 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 and it goes all the, these cells all go and they depolarize just that fast. You know how fast they depolarize? I'm talking about from the time it takes to go from the SA node out into the Purkinje fibers. Do you know how long that takes? Less than half a second. Y'all, it takes less than half a second for that electrical impulse to travel from the SA node out into the Purkinje fibers. And you know it has to travel that fast because if the heart is beating at a minimum of 60 beats a minute, that means it has to travel in less than a second in order for it to, to beat 60 times a, a minute, right? So it has to beat at least, uh, the slowest it beats is one time every second. So of course it has to travel that fast in less than half a second because you got to give it a chance to rest and refill with blood, right? So it, it, it fires, it contracts, it rests, refills with blood, and then it fires again. So that, that electrical impulse travels so fast through the heart. And you have to be able to grasp that concept. I think part of the reason people struggle with looking at these EKGs is they don't grasp the concept that this stuff is happening so fast. It's hard to even understand what less than half a second is. Like, what is that? Like, I don't think in terms of less than half of a second, right? So we think in terms of minutes. Often we think in terms of hours. We don't think in terms of fractions of a second. And so these things are happening so fast. And the sinus node, y'all, it's like the most reliable thing in our lives. This thing fires 60 to 100 times a minute for 100 years. How old was the Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth? What, what one of the, the greatest queens of England? She lived to be, how old was she, 92, 93, 94, something like that? Her heart beat. The sinus node fired 60 to 100 times a minute for all her life. That's phenomenal. That is one of the most reliable things that we have, which is why we want people to be in sinus rhythm. If the sinus node stops firing, it's one of the most reliable things we have in our like life. And if it stops firing, that's bad. That's not good. We don't want that to happen. Okay, so we want our patients to be in sinus rhythm. Okay, <clears throat> so the P wave, the P wave, and I talked a little bit about this. Let me go back here. I'll just erase all the stuff on the slide here. So I just want to remind you, the P wave is that first wave. The QRS is the big wave that follows it, and the T wave is that a little bit smaller wave that follows the QRS. So every time you see a P QRS T, P QRS T, P QRS T, P QRS T. Okay, that's that's the way those waves fall out. Okay, the P wave represents atrial depolarization. If you don't know these words, you do need to know these words. This is something a nurse should definitely know what these words mean. The P wave is atrial depolarization, the QRS is ventricular depolarization, and the T wave is ventricular repolarization. Okay, now what is depolarization and repolarization? I guess I got to move my face out of the way here so you can see what it says. Depolarization is the movement of electrolytes across the cell membrane 
And repolarization is the movement of those electrolytes back to where they started. Okay, so let's go on to the next slide here. <clears throat> All right, so normally, let's say this is the cardiac cell here, okay? So this is the cardiac cell right here. And in its resting state, sodium is in its highest concentration outside the cell, and potassium is in its highest concentration inside the cell. And there's, there's um, channels in the cell membrane. See, sodium and potassium can't just cross the cell membrane just willy-nilly. Okay, it doesn't, oh, they feel like going across the cell membrane. That ain't going to happen. There's channels that it has to go through. And those channels are closed most of the time. So normally the sodium and the potassium can't go across those channels. It can't go across those channels until it's depolarized. And the SA node has the ability to spontaneously depolarize 60 to 100 times a minute. Did you know that the sinus node will continue to de fire, depolarize, even when the person is brain dead? As long as the sinus node is getting oxygen, It'll continue to depolarize 60 to 100 times a minute, even when the person is brain dead. That's why when someone is brain dead, they still have to be on the ventilator, but their heart can keep beating. Because the sign that's how reliable the sinus node is, and it has the ability to spontaneously depolarize. It doesn't require anything in the outside to do it. It just does it on its own. Okay, and when it depolarizes, okay, this is depolarization. So when it depolarizes, what you see is you see sodium and potassium going across the cell membrane and they switch places. That's depolarization. Because there's an electrical impulse associated with those electrolytes, that's why we call them electrolytes, because there's an electrical impulse associated with them. When they cross the cell membrane, because we have wires on the chest, right? We have a little gel, so the gel is against the skin. I guess I go over here where you can see it. Uh, the gel is against the skin and then you have a wire hooked up to that. And, and that transmits that electrical impulse over to uh, um, a device that can record it, and it'll show waves, right? You go, oh, man, that's pretty cool. Somebody was really, really smart. Some electrical engineer was super smart to be able to figure that out. So that's depolarization. Now, you've got to understand that the cell cannot depolarize again until it has repolarized. Everything has to move back into place. So... Here we have a depolarized cell, right? The potassium's outside, the sodium's inside, but we've got to see that go back. So repolarization is when the sodium and the potassium go back to where they originally were. And once it's repolarized, then it can depolarize again. So <clears throat> the P wave, let me go back here. The P wave, <clears throat> is atrial depolarization. The P wave is when the atrial cells, the SA node fires and the atrial cells depolarize. So you have that movement. The QRS is when the ventricles are depolarizing, so they're actually contracting. And then the T is ventricular repolarization. So let me show you this again. So <clears throat> here we have atrial depolarize and then ventricles depolarize. And then the ventricles <clears throat> repolarize, and that's that T wave, okay? So the P represents atrial depolarization, the QRS represents ventricular depolarization, and the T represents ventricular repolarization. And if you find, you know, I'm saying those things kind of fast, so if you need to go back and rewatch this, do that, because you really do need to understand it. So here's the reality. An upright P wave on the, on the strip, an upright P wave means, this is what it means, the electrical impulse is being initiated in the sinus node. So let's look at this strip because here we have a P wave, here we have a P wave, P wave, P wave, P, P, P. Well, what's this other stuff? Well, this is the QRS and this is the T. Okay, this is a T, this is a T. So don't get the P and the T confused. Okay, so don't get them confused. So here we have an upright P wave. So what does that mean? It means it's a sinus rhythm. Dr. Sharon, are you kidding me? It's that easy? It is that easy. If you have an upright P wave, you have a sinus rhythm. Let's look at a couple other examples. All right, now this happens to have two strips. 
Nevertheless, uh, this one has, it's in two leads. And so we always look at lead two, and the top one is lead two. I'm not sure what the bottom one is, but here we have an upright P wave. I'm gonna circle my P waves. Do you know what the first thing you should do? If you get a rhythm on the, on the NCLEX, if you get a rhythm on the NCLEX, the first thing you should do is in your mind, circle all your P waves. They're all upright. If I have all upright P waves, do you know what I say to myself? Looking like a sinus rhythm to me. Looks like a sinus rhythm. I'm going to make sure. I got a couple other questions I can ask myself, but I'm pretty sure this is a sinus rhythm. And if it's a sinus rhythm, that's a good thing. That means the sinus node is setting the pace, and that's exactly what we want. So when you see a sinus rhythm, and one of the answers says, call the healthcare provider, I go, why would I call the healthcare provider about a sinus rhythm? Now, it may be a fast or a slow sinus rhythm, and so maybe I do need to do something, but I, it's not an emergency. The sinus node is going. I'm happy with that. That's what's supposed to be happening. Okay, let's look at another one. Now, this looks a little bit faster, doesn't it? And that's why you have to say to yourself, well, where is the P? You cannot confuse the P with the T. Okay, don't confuse the P with the T. And so in your head, you have to circle the P waves, right? Those are my P waves. Well, where's the T? This is the T. This is the T. This is the T. This is the T, right? So as you go along, you say, well, where's the P? And I have... Look at that. Every single P is upright. And I can see every single one of them. So I have an upright P wave. So do you know what I think? I think this is some kind of a sinus rhythm. That's what I think. Let's look at another one. Okay, so again, we're in lead two, which is what I like. I like to see uh, lead two rhythms. And my guess is on the NCLEX, they're pretty much going to be lead two rhythms. I don't think they're going to give you anything else. So Let's look and see what we've got. So I, it's kind of flat, but it's still upright. So I have a P wave, P wave, P wave. Look at, they're kind of flat, but it doesn't matter. But it's not of clinical significance to the nurse and certainly not of, uh, of significance on the NCLEX, okay? What you need to say is, is it upright? And you go, well, it's a little flat, but it's still upright. And if it's upright, that means what? It means it's a sinus rhythm, okay? So the next thing, remember I said, you say to yourself, well, I'm pretty sure it's a sinus rhythm. I got some other things I can check out. So let me, um, let me tell you the other thing you can check out. What you want to say is, well, I'm pretty sure it's a sinus rhythm, but let me make sure the QRS, that's QRS is that second wave, right? I want to make sure it's narrow. A narrow QRS means the electrical impulse is traveling quickly through the ventricles. That's what it means. And we want that electrical impulse to travel quickly, fast through the electric uh, through the ventricles because a wide QRS. I guess I need to get my pen open here. A wide QRS. Do you know what it means? It means it's weak. So remember the W goes with the W. Wide QRS means weak contraction, and I don't want a weak contraction because the ventricles are in charge of getting the blood out to the tissues. Right, the ventricles move the blood out of the heart, out to the tissues, and I don't want a weak contraction. So I don't want a wide QRS, I want a narrow QRS, because that tells me it's a nice, strong contraction. So what does it mean to be a narrow QRS? It means it's two and a half small boxes. If you've looked at that EKG paper, the telemetry paper, you know there's little teeny tiny boxes on there. If you've never looked at it, you next time you're in the hospital or someplace, Look at a patient's chart. I guarantee you they're going to have an EKG in there somewhere. Look at the EKG paper and find those little small boxes. Each small box is time. Each small box represents a period of time, and it represents 0 0.04 seconds. That's four one-hundredths of a second. Giving you just a chance to, to like, comprehend that. Four one-hundredths of a second. Four one-hundredths of a second? How... That's not, what is that? I can't comprehend that. I can't either. I can't comprehend that either. I'm just telling you. Each small box represents four one-hundredths of a second. So two and a half small boxes is 0.10 seconds, which is one-tenth of a second. One-tenth of a second. Remember I told you that the electrical impulse moves from the SA node out into the Purkinje fibers in less than half a second? Remember I told you that. 
Did you know it actually travels from the middle of the heart to the Purkinje fibers, so through the ventricles? You know how fast that electrical impulse travels just through the ventricles? A tenth of a second or faster. Y'all, that is fast. This stuff is happening fast. And if it starts to slow up, it gets weaker and weaker and weaker. So we want to see these electrical impulses travel quickly through the, uh, through, through the atria and through the ventricles. We want that QRS to be narrow because that tells me it's going really fast through there. So let's see what this means. So if we're going to measure the QRS, that means, let's see if I can draw this here. This right here is the Q, the R, and the S, okay? That's the QRS. So we're essentially counting the number of boxes inside the QRS. So let me see if I can make this so you can actually see it here, okay? So what we have here is this is the beginning of the QRS and this is the end. So this, I always find a QRS that starts on a line. Okay, it starts on a line. And so this one starts on a line. These are the little boxes, right? So each, each one of these little things is a little box and there's five little boxes in one big box. This is a big box here. And there's five little boxes in each big box. So I find a QRS that starts on a line and I say, well, that's one box, two boxes. So the number of boxes within that QRS is two small boxes and each small box is 0.04 seconds. That means my QRS is 0 0.08 because it's two boxes, right? And so two bo one box is 0.04, so two boxes is 0 0.08, so my QRS is 0 0.08 and I want it to be 0.10 or less and it is, right? So my QRS here is narrow. It is narrow. Okay, let's look at another one. All right, let's look at this one. So again, I'm going to find, so again, I'm going to find one that starts on a line and, and these are a little bit less obvious. They don't have this sharp edge. So I'm just going to go with this one. This one looks like it's starting on a line. So how many small boxes are within the QRS? So here's one. And then this one ends before even the next small box. So it kind of ends halfway be between boxes. So I have one full box and one half a box. So one full box is 0.04, but one half of a box is 0.02. So my QRS is 0.06 which is by definition narrow. So I have narrow QRS. And by the way, I have an upright P wave. So here I have an upright P and I have a narrow QRS. Do you know what this means? It means I have a sinus rhythm. It means my sinus node is the pacemaker of the heart. And that's exactly what I want. I want my sinus node to be the pacemaker of the heart. This is a little bit <clears throat> less clear, but I think you can still see it well enough. So here I have my, the P wave is over here, and then I have my QRS and my T. My P, my QRS, and my T. My P, my QRS, and my T. So the QRS starts on a line here. And it looks like it ends on the line here. So it's only one box. That's 0.04 seconds. That means that electrical impulse traveled through the ventricles in four one hundredths of a second. So that's fast. So we've got an upright. So we do have an upright P. And I have a narrow QRS, which means I have a sinus rhythm. All right. <clears throat> now I want to give you, show you an example of what a wide QRS looks like. Okay, wide QRS. So here I have an upright P, and then there's no P's here. I don't see any P's, and then I have an upright P. And this is a narrow QRS, and this is a narrow QRS, and this is a narrow QRS. And then I have these weird things here in the middle. 
Okay, I have these weird things in the middle. So it's this, this is the QRS actually right here. This is the QRS and this is the T down here. And then I have a QRS and then a T and then a QRS and a T. There's no P wave, which means if there's no P wave, this is, these aren't sinus beats. These are something else, right? They're not sinus beats. And look how wide they are from the beginning of the QRS to the end of the QRS over here. It's almost, it's, it's like four and a half to five boxes. So this is almost 0.20, maybe 0.18 to 0.20. So this is a wide, you have a wide QRS with no P wave, a wide QRS with no P wave, a wide QRS with no P wave, and then we go back to upright P wave and narrow QRS. So what are these? Now I'm going to talk about these in a different uh, video, but these, just to let you know, these are premature ventricular contractions. They're PVCs, premature ventricular contractions, PVCs. But I'll talk about those in another, another lecture. All right, so here's just a few things to remind you of what we've talked about. Let me make this a little smaller so you can see. When there is an upright P wave, when there's an upright P wave followed by an air QRS, it's always sinus rhythm. That, that's, just a, that's just a fact. It is. Now, normal, you can only call it normal sinus rhythm if the rate is between 60 and 100. You have to call it sinus bradycardia. Brady means slow. Cardia, heart, slow heart, right? Bradycardia. It's a sinus rhythm. The sinus node is in control, but it's slow. So if that's if the rate is less than 60, and you say sinus tachycardia, tachy means fast, cardia, heart, fast heart, if the rate is between 101 and 140. And the reason we cut it off at 140 is um, because it's so fast, you can't really see the P wave anymore, and you, you don't know that it's a sinus rhythm, but that's... That's another, we'll talk about that another time, okay? So let's talk about how we determine the rate because we have to know the rate. All right, I'm going to move me up here. All right. So remember, each small box is 0.04 seconds. I already told you that. Each big box, which is four small boxes, okay? This is a big box right here. So each big box, which is five small boxes is 0.20 seconds. So five large boxes is one second. So here we have some lines. So we have one big box, two. So this is 0.20 seconds. Another 0.20 is 0.40, 0.60, 0.80, one second. So one, five big boxes is one second. So one second, five more boxes is two seconds. Five more boxes is three seconds. Five more boxes is four seconds. Five more boxes is five seconds. And five more boxes is six seconds. So if you count the number of QRS complexes, which is ventricular contractions, if you count the number of QRX complexes in six seconds and multiply it by 10, you get your 60 second rate. So what is, this is six, this is six seconds because we just figured that out, right? So this is one second, two, three, four, five, six. So this is six seconds. So we're going to count the number of QRSs and multiply that by 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So 14 times 10 equals 140, which means this is a sinus tachycardia. And I know that because I have upright P waves and narrow QRSs, and the rate is 140. Now, the reason I want you to know how to calculate the rate based on those seconds like that is because there's times on the NCLEX, they're going to give you a six second strip, but you may not know it's a six second strip unless you count boxes. Okay. So um, you need to be able to do that. And here we have these lines that help us with that, but you're not going to have these lines on the NCLEX. You're, you're not going to have any of this, right? So you're going to have to be able to just count boxes and go, well, this is a six second strip. 
which means I can just count the number of QRSs in this strip and multiply it by 10, and I will get my rate. So I know, because you might go, well, I know it's sinus, because I see an upright P wave in an era QRS, but I don't know if it's tacky or brady or normal. And it's like asking you what this rhythm is, right? And one of the options is normal sinus rhythm, and one of the options is sinus bradycardia. And you go, I, I, I don't know. So you have to be able to count it, right? So that's, that's why I want you to know how to do that. Let's look at another one. So here we have upright P waves and narrow QRSs. So I know this is a sinus rhythm. But what I don't know is if it's sinus, normal sinus, sinus tack, or sinus brady. So I have, let me count big boxes. So one, two, three, four, five. So that's one second. One, two, three, four, five. So that's my second, second. One, two, three, four, five. That's three seconds. One, two, three, four, five. That's four seconds. One, two, three, four, five. That's five seconds. One, two, three, four, five, that's six seconds. So this is a six second strip and you may go, well, I saw these hash marks up there. That seems odd that there's these hash marks up there. So there are hash marks on the strips. It, when you print them, like when you actually see them in clinical, you're gonna see those hash marks and those hash marks occur every three seconds. So in real life, you don't have to be counting this stuff because you've got those hash marks, but you could get an NCLEX rhythm that doesn't have the hash marks on it. And you have to be able to figure out how many seconds it is. So um, you got to be able to figure that out even when there's no hash marks. Okay. So if this is a six second strip, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. So there's 13 QRSs. 13 times 10 is 130. So my rate is 130. So this is actually a sinus tack cardio. All right, let's do one more. So here we have, here we don't, I got rid of the hash marks. There were hash marks on here. I got rid of them. So you, so we'd have to count them, okay? All right, so here we have, we're like, I don't know. Is this a six, six, six second strip? I don't know. So I'm going to go one, oh, sorry. One, two, three, four, five. So that's one second. One, two, three, four, five. That's two seconds. One, two, three, four, five. That's three seconds. One, two, three, four, five. That's four seconds. One, two, three, four, five. That's five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. That's six. So it is a six second strip. One, two, three, four. So I have uh, four times 10 equals 40. So my rate is 40. I have upright P waves and I have narrow QRSs. So this is a sinus bradycardia. sinus bradycardia. Okay, so just kind of a summary here. Okay, so a summary, upright P wave and narrow QRS means you have a sinus rhythm. If there's no P wave, it is not a sinus rhythm. Don't, don't kid yourself. Don't go, well, it could be there's a narrow QRS. Fine, there's a narrow QRS, but if there's no P wave, it's not a sinus rhythm. Do not label something without a P wave as a sinus rhythm because it's not, okay? It has to be a P wave. Now, another thing to remember is the first word of the rhythm tells you where the electrical impulse is starting. That's what the first word of the rhythm tells you. So sinus rhythms, then sinus rhythms start in the sinus node. So sinus rhythm, sinus brady, sinus tack. It means they start in the sinus node. That's why the first word of the rhythm is sinus. Atrial rhythm starts somewhere in the atria, but not the sinus node, like atrial fibrillation and atrial flutter. And if you look at, at Google atrial fibrillation, atrial flutter, they don't have upright P waves. That's not what they, they're not normal ones anyway. They look completely different but they're atrial rhythms. They do have a narrow QRS, but they, the P wave is not upright. And ventricular rhythms start in the ventricles, like ventricular tachycardia and ventricular fibrillation. There's no P wave and the QRS is wide with ventricular tachycardia. And I will do separate, um, separate things on uh, atrial rhythms and the ventricular rhythms, okay? So I hope this was helpful to you. I know it's not always easy, but you do have to be able to grasp these basic concepts before you can really start to understand some of the other rhythms. So 
Uh, if you want to take a clinic review, the NCLEX reviews, we've got some coming up. I'm actually doing an online clinic review in November. Go to clinicreviews.com to register. And I'm going to be in Los Angeles the th I don't remember the exact dates, but in December, I'm going to be live in person in Los Angeles. And then I think it's the 16th, 17th, and 18th of December, I'm going to be in Napa Valley, Northern California. So those will be up soon on our website that you can register for. And I really hope I will get to see you there. So have a great rest of your day.